I think so, Electra. I, I think, you know, zone transits, like I was saying earlier, I quite like getting zone transits because you're in controlled airspace. You know you're safe. Yeah. You're not in the Wild West for a moment. You're in controlled airspace. But I've heard that uh, if you ask Stansted, if you ask to get a, a transit over Stansted airspace, I've heard that depending on how confident you are on the radio is dictates whether they'll allow you to fly over. Like if you phone them up and you're a bit, if you call them up and you're a bit, um, can uh, re request a VFR transit to the north, they'll just be like, nope. <laughs> But if you call them up and you sound confident, you know what you're doing, quite often they'll let you fly over Stansted. Which is something I want to do at some point. Iowa Scotsman, thank you for 25. Happy Silver Acorn Anniversary. Thank you, dude. Raccoon of Death, thank you for 10. Uh, a two digital map's not enough like the US. What, digital? Bullet? Bullet? I don't know if the CEA has said that uh, two digital maps are okay. I don't know. Um, I mean, if you think about it, in an airliner, I don't think they have maps like that. I'm pretty certain they just have tablets. So there's probably some rules around it, but I don't know what they are. You can see the entrance of Pool Harbour. So we're coming up on sandbanks, is that? Yeah, that's it. Pool Bay and the Isle of Purbeck. That's Pool Bay and that's the Isle of Purbeck, apparently. Sandbanks is really posh. Really. Does that mean it's really expensive, then? Over there is Pool. What's that? Bournemouth over here, pool over there, apparently. Really, really posh and expensive. With a name like Sandbanks, it almost sounds like, um... What's that? What's that really expensive, posh place you can go as a couple? Sandals. It sounds like Sandals, doesn't it? Just make out the pier there. You've never been able to catch the streams, Roadmaster. You're here now. You was married at Sandals in Ocarios. Can, can I ask, Doom Driver? Doom Driver, sorry. How expensive was your trip to Sandals? Alright, so it's just warning us that there's actually a um, controlled area here, but it's fine. So if you want to call them, you need to call Solent Radar if you want to enter that airspace there. But we're not, we're going we're gonna to turn it as VRP here. Max, how you doing, buddy? Dude, we've been flying for like five hours. You've been in bed. <laughs> we've been we've been to Lid. We've been to Shoreham. We've been we've just left the Isle of Wight. You just woke up. Oh my god, you're so lazy, mate. <laughs> I am not using anything that modifies the look of the water now. Right, so we are just approaching this area here. There's a VRP white bar, that's a VRP apparently, called Sandbanks. That is the Sandbanks VRP. And we're going to make a left turn. Sky Demon, Ninja Cat, Sky Demon. It's um, it's a bit like four flight, but it's geared more towards European VFR flying. But it's a similar thing. You can plan flights on it, do weights and balance checks on it, like 
you know, work out distances on it. It warns you if you're going through controlled airspace. Like, it's got all the features. So that, if you look at the bottom though, down down the bottom here, we're about to smash through that two red lines. That's the restricted area. If you remember, we checked that, and that's only active during the day, during weekdays. Did you get a new plane, Giddy? You sure did. You, you just wait till it gets a... It'll be Boeing Max before you know it. When he gets his own... When he gets his own 737. <laughs> you have to keep changing his name. <laughs> Citation Max for life. Fair enough. Man, this is quite nice around here. Quite a lot of land. So that's pool and Dorset, I think. So it's warning us about that danger area which we know about, so we don't care about that. It's lovely, isn't it? There's a glider site over there, according to the map. Old Iris Field. How many hit points does the Cessna have? I'm not sure. Um, brake horsepower on this? I don't know because this is the injection version. This is slightly more modern. That's how hilly it is down here. Look at this. You kind of automatically assume that it's going to be quite flat near the coast, but it's actually not. It's actually quite hilly here. 172 hit points. There you go. That noise transition is like the worst thing in this entire implementation of 172. quite Bob if you actually let us know what you changed it from and to we can actually adjust it uh, right so this point you would most definitely do a free to check does anybody remember the free to check if you've been here all day do you remember the free to check do you remember what it stands for and what we do how much slowage on 172 it's more about weight and balance error spike F is fuel correct so fuel yeah on, on, correct, so we, we check it's on both we don't have a fuel pump on this so we're fine we've got fuel quantity at the moment, it's good fuel flow is good, EGT is fine, so fueling is fine, R, what does R stand for? just to prove something to you rudder, no, R stands for radio Okay, radio. What do you do with, with radio? First of all, check you're on the right frequency. Push the button. Make sure the squelch and you got the volume going. Make sure you're tuned in. Think about what your next one is. Just get your radio set up and make sure it's still working okay. Yeah, that's what your radio is. E. What was E? I think you got E already. E's for engine. Engine. You're going to check the, the instrumentation, yeah? Engine, temperatures, pressures, fuel flow, all that stuff. Anything and everything to do with the engine down here. Make sure nothing abnormal. If if you've got a carburetor engine, you need to pull out the car at that point. 15 seconds. Make sure you've got no carb icing, put it back in, that kind of thing. D. What was D? Thank you for gifting a sub again to Armoranth Citation Max. <laughs> D's for direction or DI, whatever you want to call it. Basically, because what happens, and you, you, you don't realise this, but actually what happens quite a bit is this DI will drift away from that magnetic compass quite a bit. 
So you basically need to just double check that what you think, you know, is west is what really is west. So it's all to do with your direction, compassy things. Yeah, exactly. And then the final one, A. What was A? Altitude, correct. So altitude is to do with setting your altimeter, right? So, you know, you may have passed through some different airspace and they've given you new, new kind of Q&H or whatever. Set that up, make sure that's set up. Cross-check your altitude where you're supposed to be. That's what it's all about. And if you don't believe me, this is a checklist. And right there, in-flight checks. Exactly what I just told you. Look at that. Fuel on and sufficient. Radio. Correct frequencies. Check volume. E for engine. T's and P's are green. Car peak. Direction. HSI. Check against the compass. A for altimeter. Set as required. And this is something that you do regularly during your during your journey. It's a free to check. F E E D A. You get a lot of these. And you know you've got to commit that to memory. It's it's here, but you should commit it to memory because you're going to do it quite a bit. <clears throat> As a general rule of thumb, what are the general rules when to use carpet? Is it all about OAT? So if you're if you're at full power, generally speaking, you're not going to worry too much. Yeah. Where your car beat comes in is when when you're not on full power. Really, you do it as part of your free to check just to check for icing. But at this at this power setting, you shouldn't really be getting icing unless you're flying in some crazy weather that you shouldn't be flying in. In which case, you've probably got it all over your wing. Um, but it is used when you're descending, particularly so. If you're in a carbed engine, before you descend, you pull the carb heat. You have to pull the carb heat. Pull the carb heat every time you reduce power. Because otherwise, your risk of carburetor icing goes through the roof. Right, we're approaching Weymouth. And just ahead on the left is Portland Castle, apparently. That apparently is Portland Castle over there somewhere. And this is Weymouth. Been here a few times to Weymouth. I'm sure, Dr. D. Uh, and Akros, you need to get AI planes flying around, or you can log onto a network to get other aircraft. Look at this. It's beautiful when you see it like that. Do you know what this reminds me of? When we used to do farm sim and we had some fields that went right up to the cliff edge. you got to be careful, you don't use your combine down the side here. I don't think so, Eros Mike. Like, if I logged into VATSIM and started asking for VFR transit, I'm not entirely sure what the controllers would do about that. <laughs> you could have been a school teacher, but when you would not be able to learn to fly, just the ability to cry. Huh? Yeah, so that's the other thing, Limp Rimble, quite correct. Um, if you actually look, and I have got a warrior checklist, but it's in my drawer. If you actually look at a warrior checklist, then on the F for fuel, it will actually say switch tanks, like consider switching tanks. Because as part of your free to check, you'll pro often go from left to right fuel tank, but you don't do that on a Cessna. There's a really nice AI plugin for X-Plane called Live Traffic. Um, well, it's the only issue seems to be the aircraft on the ground. Hmm. Danger area, we know about this. Couldn't ignore that.
Why is there no crossflow? I, I don't know at this point. I don't know why the plane was designed that way. Don't know why there's no crossfeed. It's just, it, it, I, I've literally seen the wheel though, it's off left, right. Whoa, look at that. So Portland Castle is apparently like right here. Portland Castle is here somewhere. That's a crazy bit of land. This? That's a monster. That creates quite a big harbour area, that does actually. I come down to 2k, 2000 shortly. So many beaches, you're not kidding, look at her. I can't believe the size of that, that's insane. I don't think we're going to make it to Land's End. Oh, Lambert, might be a bit too far. I'm just bringing this down a bit lower now. So we get a slightly better view. What is that? That is actually huge. Is that man-made? It certainly looks man-made. That's nuts. That, the sea is on either side of it. That's bizarre. Is it a caravan park? Uh, I guess it could be. That would make sense. Do you know what? That, I wonder if I've been there? Because I did go to a Weymouth caravan park. That could actually be it. It's natural. That's nuts. Chesil Beach, is that what it's called? Yeah, we, we flew past Pool not long ago. I got to fly around here one day, I want to see that. I want to see this in a plane one day. That's crazy. Have you ever considered doing a cross-Atlantic and X-Plane 11? Do you mean in a, a commercial airline? Got a bit more mixture back in now because we've descended a bit. You're following in Google Earth. Whoa. It's 
If I flew on a weekend, I could fly along here, but if you fly on a weekday, that those danger areas are going to be active, I think. Trimmed us out at 2000, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, crossing Atlantic is like a big deal, you know. That's just actually massive. fly along there. A bit further up is a Jurassic Coast. You can find fossils everywhere on the beach. Fans of TV series Broadchurch will recognise it. I remember Broadchurch. I uh, reckon you can make it to Iceland from northern parts of Scotland or further wells in this plane. Possible, Chris. I don't know. I need to check the range. Because normally when you're doing that kind of thing, what they do is they they put, like, extra fuel tanks in the back, literally. You probably want something that goes a bit faster with a bit further range. No, Enceladus, that's in South Wales. Pendine, so Pendine Flats in South Wales is where they did the run speed attempt. You've done Scotland to Vagar and it worked. You got a vacation uh, today. Just starts like a week back. Oh, you got a week long vacation, right? Half term, right? Uh, find before the airspace in the UK in 3D and Google Earth for one to show the layers that you have, like you were trying to explain in the beginning. What is it just a link that you can use, um, Aerospoint? I wish Twitch would unexplain as a game. It is as a game, El Phillips. But actually, what, would we, what I've been asking Twitch to do for like two and a half years is just have a flight sim category. So instead of having... DCS World, X-Plane 11, FSX, like, you know, it, it's too much of a niche to be doing that. You need just flight simulation, and everybody can just pile in there. But they've not done it yet. Oh, I see what you mean, at this point. You import the file into Google Earth and, like, get it to show it. I see. You've never been to this part of England, Zarek? I've kind of driven around here, but I've never... 
never flown around here. It looks so different when you fly it. Like, you just get a complete sense of how the land is just not flat, it's just bumpy and weird and... One of the features of this aircraft model is the noise cancelling headset. What you mean? This bit. It's a lot quieter. <laughs> when you put your headset on, it's a lot quieter. But it just sounds really, really muffled and weird. Um, Eris Mike, why don't you chuck it into the Discord flight sim thing? Because it could be useful for people. Navarine, thank you for 31 months. All right, Kirby, enjoy. Where is this? Did all the Cessna 172, 182, 210 in Europe cross the Atlantic themselves? There was a place to assemble over here. I wonder. Um, there are actually companies that will package your aircraft and transport it for you in a container. They specialise in doing that. Um, it's expensive. But then again, there's also people who specialise in fitting out your plane in extended fuel tanks and then a pilot who will fly it over for you. But either way, it's going to cost a fair amount of money to fly from America to Europe. That is some lovely scenery down there. Look at that. Well, this is where Broadchurch was filmed. What, here? You've walked down there, Heyman. <laughs> nice. Sea town then onto Lime Regis. You quite often get this when you get to Cornwall and Devon. You get these roads that just descend down to the like the towns. And the problem is when you're in these towns, you often can't get phone reception because the masts are like up on a hill and you go down the coast here and like you don't have line of sight on the mast anymore. So you get no signal, literally. Main Puritan, thank you for 14 months. Too bad you won't be alive when ATS gets to your state. <laughs> oh dear. Can I ask which state you're in? Oh, you're in Maine. That was obvious. All right, here's our turning point. What is this, Seaton? And then we've got Exmouth down the coast, though. 
Do you know what? I might just amend this. Got to Exmouth. Uh, the war goes military military over in the weekday. Good old military. Got a view. I'd like to, at some point, Lucas, sort of fly this way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this kind of a, this kind of journey here, you would probably fly all the way out and stay overnight somewhere, and then fly all the way back. So you you could do it with a higher aircraft, but you're better doing it with a. If you can get a share in something, it'd be much better. Is that another caravan part there. They're just everywhere. You lived in Exeter for four years. Did some great flying down there and you got your PPL. <laughs> nice, dude. It does look like a great place to fly around, actually. Yeah, but I'm Batson. It's not really the place for GA, though, is it? these like little valleys here you can bet you know in late autumn and stuff these things will get a lot of rolling fog coming in i bet you they get fogged in quite a bit would it be possible to do a barrel roll in this plane Woohoo! <laughs> Pleshnikov, how are you doing Now, Exeter, Exeter Airport is over there somewhere. Please try it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Do you know how many times I've flight simmed him and asked to do barrel rolls? How many do you think? Yeah, it's at least three. It's definitely at least three. <clears throat> we landed in the Isle of Wight. We took off out of Earl's Cone, flew over South End, landed in Lyd, flew west out of Lyd, along the coast, landed in Shoreham, took off out of Shoreham, uh, went over to uh, Plymouth, and then flew down into the Isle of Wight, left the Isle of Wight, flying west, and we're basically en route now. On the south coast. Why don't you try something harder like not using elevators for a flight? What? That's a bit like saying to somebody who's playing a driving game, why don't you try something harder by not using a steering wheel? As in, don't steer. It's such an odd question. Was that? Sidmouth, that is. I didn't realise, look at this, they've got a hill here and a hill here, so Sidmouth just sits in a massive valley. On our next thing, Bob, it'll be like, why don't you see if you can go Mac 1 in the Mac loop in this? <laughs> K-Steen, thank you for double top 40 months. <laughs> Try to do a flight, but don't go in the air.
Yeah, the details are uh, details really good. You live in a valley, it's not fun. We had flooding problems during the spring due to ice jamming up in the river. I wouldn't want to live in a valley, if I'm honest. Or if I did, I'd want to live on a sloped bit that was not the lowest point. <laughs> I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be one of those who's like at the bottom of the valley. That's where trouble lies. That is a massive caravan park up in Ag. Look at that. It's the Air 4 Lab Cessna 172. Well, let's go. Yeah, so that kind of, what is it, an estuary or whatever? If you go that way, that takes you straight to Exeter. And Exeter airfield is over here on the right somewhere. That is Exmouth, and we're going to take a left at Exmouth. And we're going to head down to Torquay. Now then, our fuel is looking decidedly low. <laughs> About 18 gallons or so total. Should be all right. If you could, would you buy a Cirrus Vision Jet SF fifty? No. I can't remember, Baz. I think you multiply it by like four point four or something daft. I can't remember. Or is it 3.4? I think 8 is about 30. It doesn't really matter, Baz. It's a number. See, it doesn't matter if these are like in widgets or nuts. If we've got 9 there and we've got 9 there, we've got 18. And if we're reading 6 or 7 over here an hour, it doesn't take a genius to work out how many hours of flying we've got. And it really doesn't matter if they're gallons or litres. Right then, so, Exmouth turning point. Now, in real life, what you would do at this point, on your log, you'd log the time. That's important. Because if you ever get lost, you want to know where you was at a certain time. Because, let's say, what is it now, 1836. So if we turned to Exmouth 1836, and then we get lost, and have been flying for like 10 minutes... We, we pretty much know that we're going to be 10 minutes somewhere southwest of um, Exmouth. And we can use that to predict where we might be on the map. And also, when you make a turn like that... So the, 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 memory, the memory acronym for that is Time Turn Talk. Yeah, whenever you make a turn, time turn talk. So time, make note of the time, make the turn, talk as in do you need to talk to ATC? Because quite often, if you're talking to ATC, um, even if it's just a basic service, they'll often say to you things like um, report turning at Exmouth. So that acronym or mnemonic or whatever you want to call it basically reminds you, do you need to report that? Right, let's have a look. What the heck? Is that a golf course? No, that's not a golf course. It's just like a really weird spit of land though. It 
It's very seaside kind of holiday resort down here, isn't it? You can kind of see why as well. Uh, Rizzy, we've got Orbex scenery, Orbex true earth scenery at the moment. Also, as well, you, what you're supposed to do after you do the time to talk thing is do a gross error check. And a gross error check is where you basically look at your map and, you know, like massive, what they call, the reason they call it a gross error check is to make sure you're going in the right direction. So you look at it and go, the sea is on my left, the land is on my right, we've just passed a big town, that's probably blah, 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 there's, there's an estuary there, yep, I know where I am. So I'm in the right place and I'm heading in the right direction. Like, there's, like, significant landmarks on the map. I just got back from uh, the place that's Dawlish Warren, went for a week with the family. Or here? Nice, dude. So that, according to this, is Tainmouth Harbour. And that goes into Newton Abbott. That water there goes to Newton Abbott. And there's a race course there. Newton Abbott race course. Meanwhile, we're heading to Torquay. Torquay is a place I have been to. I seem to remember it was a bit of a pain to drive around. <laughs> Flying doesn't sound relaxing when you've got shed loads of things to deal with and remember. And don't forget, in the planes I fly, we don't have an autopilot, so you're literally hand-flying the plane all the time. As well as doing the nav, as well as doing the comms. You got chicken nuggets and chips for dinner. You want to get some hot sauce on those chicken nuggets? Right, so after Torquay, we're going to be turning inland. Cutting across. Um, heading to Plymouth. So it looks like we've got some elevation here as well. So uh, we have to watch the altitude here. Coming across towards Dartmoor. Yeah, you can trim the plane enough to take your hands off, and that's what you do, but unlike in a sim, when you're flying in real life, there's always thermals and drops and, like, temperature differences, a little bit of bits of wind kicking around. It's just never-ending. So although you take your your the weight off the controls with trim, you're still constantly, like, sometimes you'll just suddenly get lifted up 50 feet. <laughs> it just happens. It's the same thing that, like, gliders rely on. You know what gliders... They, they they pick up on those thermals to keep them going upwards. That's exactly what they do. They look for, like, little clouds where you'll get a thermal rising underneath. They'll go over to it, pick up the thermal, climb. Those little pockets of temperature differences will lift and drop you, and the wind will push you around. The net effect is you can't just trim it and do nothing. So this is Torquay. Look at this. This is a, a big holiday spot. Right, so... Usual thing. You're approaching your waypoint. Time turn talk. Gross error check. And then often a free to check. Is how you'll roll it, so you'll go knock your time down, make your turn. Talk to ATC, turning overhead talky, whatever. Gross error check. Well, it's pretty easy here because of the sea. The sea's here, we're heading roughly west in the compass. Talkie's behind us, we know where we're going. Food check, you go through the fuel checks, radio, engine, direction, altimeter, all that good stuff.
Phil93, thank you for 55 months, Phil. Right, just leaving Torbay. Straight overland to Plymouth. Yeah, Fleet Admiral, we went on from crafting spears. We then built the engine after we found some jerry cans. And then we found some plastic and made a Cessna. We upgraded the gyrocopter and came up with this. <laughs> That's your VOR though, look. Bayhead VOR. BHD. There's not many VORs left. It used to be all over the place, but not many more. It's a nice place to fly, Heli Pilot. If you ever come to the UK, Heli Pilot, let me know. And we'll go flying down here. But I think there's better places we can go as well. Go up to Wales and Scotland. Crazy, crazy scenery. What's a VOR? Think of it as like um, a beacon that you can tune into and aim at, if you like, or aim away from. It's like a constantly transmitting thing. Have you, Ali Pilot, I don't mean this in a bad way, but have you ever been outside of the US? Like, have you ever been to Europe? Is the iPad a new toy? I've had it for a while, I've flipped. I think I bought it about a year ago. But this is my second iPad. This one's got a um, SIM card built in as well. My other iPad I've had for about five years and doesn't have SIM card. Doesn't even get updated by iOS anymore. Like a lighthouse. Um, yeah, kind of. Think of a lighthouse, except it's kind of transmitting radio waves in a circle, quickly. You've been all over this, done most of Europe, US, Canada, and a bunch of Africa. Oh, well, there you go. But you've not been to the UK, right? I forgot you're in the military, so you've been all over the place. Yeah, you should come to the UK as a civilian. Yeah, I take the iPad out. I take my phone as well. Some advice on how to become a commercial pilot. <laughs> Benny boy, it's it's a tricky one, dude. But the cost is the issue. Like these days, people like EasyJet and stuff, they want you to spend 120 grand on a training course that will take you from nothing to commercial pilot, and there's a big queue of people wanting to do it. So what often happens now is their parents are like remortgaging homes and stuff to pay for it all. They don't they don't sponsor you bullets go, you have to pay for it yourself. And then the idea is you'll pay it back over the course of your career. Which you know realistically when you start out that's not going to happen. It's only later on when you make captain after what. I think you get to senior first officer after about 6 years or something. And then captain maybe after nine, and then you're on triple fit like uh, six figures. But you know, 120 grand, it's like starting off with a mortgage, quite literally. Rolling hills. No.
No, it's more than that, Yoja. It's like four and a half thousand for senior first officer. It's crazy. Because the thing is, as part of your training, you've got to get... Oh, to get your CPL, you've got to do a minimum... Of, I forget how many. 100 hours to just to do your CPL. So you've got to go flying a lot just to get that. Then when you do eventually make it and you get tight rated on the like Airbus, say, you've got to do however many hours it is to become a senior first officer, which is a crazy amount, and then captain's like even more again. We're flying to Plymouth at the moment. Well, that's where we're routing to. This is the start of the Dartmoor here. I think Dartmoor was the... Uh, wasn't Dartmoor the setting for Sherlock Holmes, the Hound of the Baskervilles and all that? I think that was Dartmoor. Uh, 19 King, welcome back. It's annoying you have to pay to be a pilot. Um, I guess it depends how much you want to do it, but... Let's say, let's say you want to be a doctor, right? Seven year course at university to be like a doctor. And that means seven years of tuition fees at £9,000 a year. Seven years of living expenses at £4,000 a year. You pretty much cost, like it's going to cost you pretty much the same as being a pilot. So the other way of looking at it is you're invested in yourself. The only downside is you may spend a load of money and then find out that you're not cut out for it. Like you might be 25 grand into this before you realize that you're just not skilled enough to be a pilot. And also, you know, if you ever lose your medical, you're done. <laughs> so if something happens, something happens that for whatever reason and you lose your medical, you can't fly. You can't do your job. That's what happened to you. Oh, dude, I can only... I can imagine how much of a, a kick in the teeth that is. <laughs> You're really good at flight sims now. I love it, man. But I assume the military paid for your training, so it wasn't like some big, massive loan you took out. We know about the danger area. Surface to 2,200 feet. That's scary. Let's have a look at that. Active by Notem. 22,000 feet, sorry. Active by Notem, that one. That, wait, that was all your own, your own pocket training. What? I assumed it was the military paid you to do that. Uh, Revan, it's the Orbex True Earth scenery. Yeah, so if you look at that circle on the map there, um, on the Sky Demon, there's basically an area that they can activate, a military restricted area, over here. Probably training or something. You look big planes. Cut your teeth on the small planes and learn how to fly before you move on the big planes, is my advice. Starting some of the UK six years ago, 40 to 45k for direct entry, first officer, BA, and easy. There was a guy, a young lad, who, who got his PPL at um, Earl's Cone when I was training. And he then went on to do his... He got his commercial license. And then basically, he had offers from EasyJet, Ryanair, and Flybe. And he didn't want to fly Ryanair. He just didn't like... He said the interview, they were just horrible, like they just didn't care. He said he didn't, have, he didn't enjoy the interview at all. He said Flybe 
really nice people, but he didn't fly fancy flying turboprops out of Glasgow. Whereas EasyJet, Airbus, he was like, yep, that's what I'm doing. Because it has a better kind of future to it, as it were. Did he have his multi-engine? I assume he must have gone on to get his multi-engine. Yeah, I, to be honest, I think he made the right choice. Much better future. I'm sure turboprops are fun, but it's, you know, if you're flying them like Dash 8s out of Glasgow, it's kind of a restrict you a bit in terms of what you're hour building. I think you're better off hour building on an Airbus because later on you can go on to do like the bigger Airbuses and stuff. Right, look at Plymouth. This is huge. L. Phillips, at the moment, I have no intention of doing multi-engine. Only because of cost. I'd love to do multi-engine, but the cost, it's, it's almost twice the price. I've got two engines. What's that there, I wonder? Right. Anybody remember the, uh, the acronym, as it were? If you remembered it, give yourself a pat on the back. Time, turn, talk, gross error check, free to check, yeah? Know the time, make the turn. Talk to ATC. Gross error check so you know where you are and where you're going. Make sure you're not made a mistake and turned the wrong way or something. So, to, admittedly, it's a lot easier here because, you know, with the C on our left, it's pretty hard to get it wrong. But it's not always like this. I mean, it sounds stupid, but if you're in the middle of, like, landmass that looks the same in all directions, you can quite easily make a mistake. And then you come in with your free to check, yeah? Fuel, still enough. Radios, we'll assume set. T and P's are good. Yep, looks good. Direction indicator. What are we on? 270, 280, 282-ish. See? Need slight adjustment. They do drift a bit. Cost of training or cost of running? Uh, cost of running, really. I, I could stomach the training cost, but the running cost on dual engine? It's just, it's just crazy, man. Oh. Currently, well, we're just flying, we're just leaving Plymouth here. It's on the little map down the bottom. Why don't I fly in VR? I could fly in VR, but streaming in VR would be a completely different proposition, wouldn't it? That is nuts. Huge, huge history. Huge naval history at Portsmouth. Right, Whitsand Bay on the left. And we're going to go straight across land now. Next point is Newquay. So, I'm going to have a look at the plate for Nuki. Let's have a look. Yeah, he was in earlier, Jeff, um, all about flight. Jeff was in here earlier, talking about his new uh, Rift S. How often do you replace your squirrel car? Just when it gets a bit manky. 
Ragnarsson, thank you for 27. Uh, Jay Limbu, thank you for a year, dude. Happy anniversary. 19 King with 15 months. So, it looks like we've got a single runway. So, we're probably going to be landing with a crosswind, no doubt. Let's see what it says. Maybe 3 0. Inbound aircraft contacts at least 10 north score prior to Aerojump. GA traffic not requiring handling will self position on the GA parking area southeast of the control tower. So that's the top of the map there, isn't it? It says GA parking right at the top there. Arrivals, prepare aircraft of more than 5,600 kilograms. Must not join the final track to either runway. It kind of sounds like they have direct approaches. That's what it sounds like to me. Uh... I don't know, when it gets too manky, I'll just throw it away. You're going to go say hello to Max. All right, Helipilot, have a good one, sir. what for charity a used cap <laughs> that would be weird I've got full approach tower and radar so yeah they would basically vector you in almost certainly vector you in Actually, what's the weather doing? Oh, Nuki weather. Look at it. You can see it closing in. Nuki weather 280. So, yeah, 30 landing sounds perfect. Visibility 4,000 meters, broken at 300 feet. Oh, boy. Pressure 1021. Kind of sounds like the weather is. The pressure's gone up, though, bizarrely enough. Could be fun. So yeah, I think we're gonna go direct straight into three zero. You would expect to get vectored. Maybe you would go like Down to what's that, Saint Austell? You can actually fly to Saint Austell and get a better approach. Although in a GA, they'd probably take you. They'd probably take you north, actually. 
It'll probably take you like that direction. And then come in for a right base, something like that. I'm surprised they don't have any VRPs around here. Well, Kalishnikov, I can't refuel because I've lost that that thing on the Air 4 lab, but I'm going to have to restart the sim probably to get it back. According to this, there's a rest... Mo what does that say? Restormal Castle coming up. I've played Sturmovic before, Goon Boy. Uh, restart the FL plugin. Would probably work, but I'm not going to do it while I'm until I'm on the ground. <laughs> You're strict to put on O2 and we climb to 12k. So I could see what hypoxia symptoms were. It's different for everyone. It's good to know what your first tell is. Someone yawning, laughing, headache. Have you ever seen those programs? Uh, what's that one that I watched? The best one I watched was the... There was select... I forget the name of the program now, but they were selecting... Um, NASA was selecting astronauts. And as part of, like, the very, very, very rigorous program, one of them was the hypoxia bit, where they put them in a, in a, a tank, put them in a pressurised chamber, and slowly start to sort of, if you like, thin out the atmosphere. And it's, it's, it's crazy. Like you say, some of them just start getting a bit giddy, but what they did was they had them... They had them with playing cards and stuff where they had to keep like doing stuff and then add up the numbers on the cards just like really simple stuff and they'd all start off doing it properly and then as the hypoxia kicked in they just couldn't do it they were like um five and eight <laughs> five and eight <laughs> like, it was just crazy how the, how the hypoxia just affected them But one of them just like totally failed. She she totally failed to recognize that she even had hypoxia. And that was one of the things. Because what they asked them to do is decide when they think they have hypoxic conditions. And that was where they failed. Like some of them failed because some of them would, would say, yes, yes, I've definitely got conditions when they hadn't. Other ones would have conditions and say, but didn't recognize it, which is even more dangerous. Both of them are dangerous for a NASA mission. Wow, it's actually getting quite misty around here. I have not L Phillips no. There's actually an airfield here, look at that. Will you play Detroit when it comes out on PC? Um Detroit, but let's go. I'm not sure what that that game is. go to the right bit and completely miss this out. Alright, so we've got like 14 gallons left, something like that, which is fine. Oh, Detroit become human. Ah, okay. 
I don't know. <laughs> Every man and his dog will be playing that game on Twitch. I really want to play Red Dead Redemption 2, but... I was going to wait for the PC version, but I'm kind of got an inkling to play it. But I would only do it after Orlando now, I think. So you see, like, land like this, where it just seems to be the same in all directions. This is where you can make a mistake navigating. That's why you do the gross error check. I don't know, Whippy, is it even possible to do it? The problem that Jeff and I have is we're, like, six-hour time difference or so. I can only watch you play at other Twitches are annoying. I agree, Bullets Co. Most people on Twitch don't agree with you, though. <laughs> That's a weird-looking junction. What's going on there, then? That's supposed to be a roundabout. The heck? That's really bizarre. I don't even see how that works. Never seen a junction like that in the UK. parking roundabout. I have no idea what it is. Right, 390 feet elevation. Need to bear that in mind. So we landed on Q&H. So we want to be approximately 1400 when we get to base. We're going to go for a right base into 3 0. Right, so landing checklist would be brakes. We don't have any undercarriage to put down. Mixture, we're going to have to start bringing it back to rich now. Fuel pumps on both. Sorry, fuel's on both. There's no fuel pump. Once it's sufficient. Instruments. T's and P's are all good. Car P we don't need. Hatch harness fuel. We'll do us. And we'll take the landing light now. Uh, it's X plane 11. I don't want any viz on it just yet. 